to send an object into space, you're talking about, or a satellite, millions of pounds to get something just into orbit around the Earth. And, and the majority of that is going to be launch costs. So it costs somewhere between $5,000 to $20,000 a kilogram to get something into space. Space, and we think of that as our rocket. The payload only takes up a tiny amount at the top. The rest of it is just fuel to actually get your rocket into space or and your satellite to go wherever you need it to get to. Now, obviously, when it's in space, it can then go on from there. But actually, the problem here is, is if we're talking about manned missions or robotic missions with human beings, you're talking about another level of complexity. And I think you're going from the tens of millions to possibly billions to get, or tens of billions either, to get a, a, a basic, a really crude basic manned mission to Mars. Uh, because the thing is, you can't just simply launch your rocket as you would a satellite from Earth and let it fly off to Mars. Basically, you've got to take on more stuff. You've got to get, you know, habitable areas, all these kind of things. And this is what I would say, since a rocket can only launch so much in payload, what you're going to need to do is actually build something in orbit around the Earth, which would take human beings to Mars. Now, the problem you've got there, as I say, you've got to talk about, it's about, I think, four years each way, roughly, I think. You've got to have enough water, which you've got to recycle, so you've got to take all the material to recycle that. You've got oxygen recycling, food, heating, You've got to have all these things on board. Exercise is going to be a massive thing because at the moment I'm working against gravity. My, basically, my heart is working against gravity to pump blood up from my feet to my head. That actually keeps my heart physically active, keeps my muscles and my bones physically strong. Now, if you're in space, you don't have to, you're weightless, you're not massless, but gravity isn't acting in your body. That means your heart doesn't have to work as hard. It start, like any muscle, it will start to shrink. Arm muscles, everything else will start to shrink. Your, mus your bones actually will start to lose some of their density because they don't have to be as physically strong. You can, you've got four years of this when you're going to Mars. So you're going to have to have your people exercising along the way, which is incredibly important. Uh, the other thing is something called solar proton events. Now, we've been tracking these historically and we noticed that uh, there was a few that just missed the Apollo missions. Now, literally, some of them by a couple of weeks. Now, if they'd have hit the astronauts, some of these, some of them were large enough to that the astronauts would have got their entire annual radiation dose in a couple of minutes exposure. Now, that's on the good side. Above that, there are ones that we've tracked that just missed Apollo that you're talking about severe radiation sickness. And then there's beyond that, there's fatal ones. And we've recorded ones that would have been fatal if astronauts had been caught in this. But not only have you got the physical well-being of the human beings, you've got the mental well-being. It's a bit, I know this is going to sound really nerdy, especially me being a physicist, but if you've ever seen Red Dwarf, the whole point of there is about, you know, like to be stuck in, you know, no hope. You're stuck in somewhere with four people for years and years and years. It's what it's going to be like going to Mars, you know, and even with your best mates, you know, I love all my friends, but could I cope being stuck in a room with them for several years? And I don't think I could, you know, and I think that be the real key here. It might not be physical toughness you're looking for. It actually might be mental toughness.